successfully installed cameras capturing an eruption from the Black Diamond Pool at Yellowstone National Park on Saturday. A ripple of alarm moved quickly across social media when a headline claimed that the USGS had issued a red alert because the Yellowstone magma chamber had expanded faster than expected. Short videos and dramatic images were shared and reshared, each one adding a little more fear. Satellite shots, thermal maps, and shaky clips of steaming ground. The combination of striking visuals and a scary subtitle made the story feel urgent. People clicked, commented, and worried, because the idea of a famous supervolcano suddenly stirring sounded like a disaster movie come true. The real situation, however, was more complex and far less immediate than those posts suggested. Scientists at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory and the U.S. Geological Survey monitor the park constantly. They publish regular updates about small changes in the ground, earthquake activity, and shifts in thermal features. These updates are open to the public and explain that Yellowstone's ground can go up or down by tiny amounts over months and years. Those small changes can be caused by seasonal shifts in groundwater, by the slow movement of magma or hot fluids beneath the surface, or by other natural cycles. The official notices did not include any sudden park-wide red alert ordering people to evacuate. Instead, scientists noted changes that they would watch carefully, not signs that a big eruption was about to happen. In recent months, researchers published studies and used new techniques that helped them see the magma system under Yellowstone more clearly than before. One set of studies used controlled seismic methods, making small controlled vibrations and listening to how seismic waves move through the crust. Those tests produced sharper images of rock layers, pockets of melt, and regions where gas can collect. Finding these structures is important for science because it shows how magma, heat, and gas are arranged under the park. But mapping the subsurface is not the same as predicting a sudden eruption. These results improve understanding and monitoring, yet they do not point to an immediate, unstoppable crisis. When people talk about the magma chamber, Expanding faster than expected, they usually mean scientists measured a small amount of ground uplift in part of the caldera. Instruments like GPS stations record how the land rises or falls. Sometimes the ground moves a few centimeters over long periods. Such inflation can mean magma is moving or that gases are building in small pockets, but it can also reflect changes in groundwater or seasonal patterns. In practical terms, Recent uplift has been measured in millimeters or a few centimeters, changes that are important to monitor but that do not translate into sudden explosive action on the surface. The structure under Yellowstone is not a single giant pot of molten rock. Instead, the crust beneath the park contains layers of mostly solid hot rock, with some regions where the rock is partially molten. Scientists estimate that much of the so-called magma reservoir is only partially molten, a mix of hot crystals and melt rather than a big pool of liquid. That matters a lot for understanding risk. A system with a low percentage of melt behaves differently and would be less likely to produce a rapid, catastrophic eruption without clear and prolonged warning signs. New imaging work in recent years revealed interesting details, like a volatile rich layer above a deeper magma area and a deeper pool of hot material than previously mapped. Those discoveries help explain why Yellowstone has such active geysers, hot springs, and small steam-driven events. The system is complicated, heat and gases move through many channels and pockets, producing surface features and occasional local explosions. Finding a gas-rich cap in hidden pockets does not by itself mean that a massive eruption is around the corner. Rather, it gives scientists better tools to watch for signs that truly matter. The public often fears the phrase magma chamber because movies and sensational pieces portray a single vast lake of lava ready to boil over. The real world is more like a layered plumbing system with lenses, sills, and pockets of partial melt. Gas moves through these layers and escapes in many places, which often prevents a sudden buildup of pressure. Because the system can vent gas, the odds of a fast, massive eruption without big warning signals are lower. Scientists are constantly measuring how gas moves, where it collects, and how it affects pressure underground. Mapping those pathways increases confidence in assessing real danger. Monitoring technology has improved a great deal. Networks of GPS stations, 
tilt meters, seismic stations, and satellite radar give researchers many ways to detect small changes. Over the last few years, teams noticed small hydrothermal explosions in certain basins and clusters of small earthquakes in local areas. Those events can be dangerous for visitors and park staff near the affected sites, but they are not the same as a regional catastrophe. Hydrothermal explosions occur when hot water or steam suddenly expands and erupts through fragile ground. They can damage the surface locally and are treated seriously by park managers, who will close trails and increase monitoring near the sites. When social media fills with claims of a red alert, a practical step is to check the official sources. The USGS and Yellowstone Volcano Observatory have public channels where they release statements and monthly updates. If an urgent large-scale alert were issued, these agencies would publish it and explain what it meant and what actions people should take. In the absence of such a statement, it is more likely that sensational posts are exaggerating the meaning of routine scientific findings. Viral videos sometimes mix accurate details from scientific papers with dramatic interpretations, and that combination can mislead even careful readers. Small ground uplift, minor earthquake swarms, and isolated steam explosions are a part of Yellowstone's normal behavior. These are real hazards for people close to thermal features and fragile ground. They demand caution, clear signage, and sometimes temporary closures. But the kind of striking region-wide signals that would arrive before a truly large eruption, weeks to months of intense sustained earthquakes, large and rapid ground deformation across broad areas, or major spikes in gas emissions, were not observed in a pattern that would justify declaring a national-level emergency. Scientists ask particular questions when they see changes. Is the rate of uplift steady or accelerating? Is seismicity spreading and increasing in size? Are gas emissions changing in a way that matches known precursors to an eruption? So far, patterns at Yellowstone have generally fit with a dynamic but venting system, a place that changes and produces small events but does not show the sequence of large escalating signals tied to catastrophic eruptions. That does not mean the risk is zero. All active systems are monitored because they can change. But current data did not match the red alert scenarios suggested by viral posts. It is useful to compare Yellowstone with other volcanic systems. Some volcanoes give clear signals shortly before they erupt, including many earthquakes and quick strong ground uplift. Others go through cycles of inflation and deflation for long periods without erupting. Experts combine all available data – seismicity, ground deformation, gas chemistry, and hydrology – to build a fuller picture. Yellowstone's long history includes massive events tens or hundreds of thousands of years ago. But geology does not work on a human timetable. The idea of the system being overdue does not have scientific meaning because the timescales of these processes are far longer and more irregular than human lifetimes. When people see frightening headlines, journalists and content creators have a responsibility to check with independent scientists and official agencies before declaring an emergency. Good reporting links to original studies or quotes agency statements, helping readers understand context. A scientific paper or a small increase in deformation does not equal an immediate eruption. Clear context, like explaining that the magma below Yellowstone is mostly solid, that only a small fraction is molten, and that gas pathways can relieve pressure, helps avoid unnecessary panic. For visitors and residents near the park, the real immediate danger is local hydrothermal activity. Hydrothermal explosions and unstable ground are the kinds of hazards that produce injuries. Park managers and scientists advise staying on boardwalks, obeying signs, and following park updates. These practical steps protect people from real, local hazards without spreading fear of a larger catastrophe that the current evidence does not support. Misinformation can harm public trust. When sensational content mixes facts and dramatic interpretation, it makes it harder for scientists to communicate real risks when they appear. Consistent, calm communication is critical, especially for park visitors who could face local hazards. Scientists and park officials work to explain the difference between normal activity and real warning signs. Their consistent message is that Yellowstone is active and changing, deserving respect and caution, but that a sudden collapse into disaster based on small changes is not backed by the data. The new imaging studies are exciting from a scientific view. 
They reveal details like the depth of the top of the magma reservoir and the presence of gas-rich layers that act like lids or vents. That information improves hazard assessment. Better maps of the subsurface let researchers identify areas more likely to experience hydrothermal explosions and help predict how gas and pressure might move. This knowledge makes emergency planning smarter and park operations safer. Scientists want that understanding not to scare people, but to prevent harm and to inform better safety measures. If a study suggests the magma system is changing faster than older models predicted, scientists treat that as a research result to test and refine. Models of magma movement are updated when new data appears. When a model shows faster inflation in some area, researchers study whether the pattern matches known paths toward eruptions or whether it fits more with normal cycles of activity. Often, the result is a new set of questions to answer through more data collection and analysis rather than an immediate alarm. Local events in the park deserve real attention. In recent years, there have been occasional hydrothermal explosions and small earthquake swarms that required local park responses. Those events prompted trail closures, increased monitoring, and public safety warnings. Targeted responses like these illustrate how agencies handle specific hazards without escalating to region-wide panic. Scientists aim to be precise. When a local area becomes dangerous, they warn and act for that area, not for people far away who face no immediate threat. For people wondering what to do when they encounter scary headlines, practical advice is straightforward. First, check primary sources like official USGS and Yellowstone Volcano Observatory updates. Second, read reputable journalism that quotes scientists and explains evidence clearly. Third, avoid sharing unverified claims that amplify fear. Sensational posts may go viral quickly, but they often distort the science in ways that cause unnecessary worry and distract from real hazards that require attention. Scientists are also improving how they communicate. Many agencies now try to explain not only the data, but what it means in plain language. That includes clarifying how scientists interpret small uplifts, what kinds of signals really matter, and why a low percentage of melt makes a super eruption less likely without clear precursors. This type of clear communication helps the public understand what actions are reasonable and which reactions are overblown. Some commentators and content creators imagine worst-case scenarios because they attract attention. But the work of volcano scientists is methodical and evidence-based. They run computer models, compare many kinds of data from different sensors, and test hypotheses through careful experiments. Controlled source seismic experiments, for example, are a deliberate tool that produces reliable images of subsurface structures and helps show where melting gases concentrate. These details are the kind of science that supports good hazard planning and sensible safety measures. As for the future, the hope is that scientists will keep improving monitoring and imaging Park managers will remain alert to local dangers, and the public will get better at separating hype from real warnings. New studies and improved instruments are steps toward that future. They let scientists answer questions they could not before, like identifying the depth of key layers and how gas moves through the system. Those answers make emergency planning smarter and park operations safer. In practical terms, people living far from Yellowstone do not need to change their lives based on viral headlines. The balance of evidence points to careful monitoring and ongoing research, rather than an immediate, dramatic eruption. That is not as thrilling as a television apocalypse, but it is steadier and more useful when it comes to protecting people and planning responses. If conditions change markedly, such as a sudden, sustained spike in earthquakes across a wide area, rapid and accelerating ground uplift in many places, or large changes in gas chemistry. Then the USGS and Yellowstone Volcano Observatory would communicate clearly what those signs meant and what actions people should take. Until then, the responsible approach is to respect Yellowstone's power, be cautious near thermal features, and rely on official updates rather than on sensational social posts. Scientists and park managers also think about how to turn technical findings into useful action. Data by itself is only valuable if someone uses it to make better safety choices. That means emergency plans, clear signage, and regular drills for park staff and first responders. It also means working with nearby towns, county officials, and state agencies 
so everyone knows who does what if an unusual situation develops. Those plans tend to focus on realistic, local threats, closing dangerous thermal areas, rerouting trails, and giving medical help to anyone injured by hot ground or steam. Preparing for those real possibilities is far more practical than planning for a cinematic super eruption that current data does not support. Public education is an important part of the response. Visitors who understand what geysers, hot springs, and fragile crust can do are less likely to take risky shortcuts. Simple messages, stay on boardwalks, obey signs, keep children close, and avoid off-trail exploration. Save lives. When scientists and park staff explain why certain areas are closed or why a small hydrothermal event happened, it builds trust. The clearer and more frequent that communication is, the less room there is for panic when people see dramatic but misleading headlines online. The scientific community values independent review and collaboration. New imaging methods and models are checked by other teams and tested against older data. Peer review, conferences, and shared datasets help make sure that claims of rapid changes hold up under scrutiny. That process can take time, which is another reason why an immediate frightening headline based on preliminary results should be treated cautiously. Science moves forward through careful replication and critique. That slow, steady process is what gives authorities confidence when they update hazard levels or issue warnings. Insurance, local planning, and infrastructure are also part of the conversation, but they focus primarily on likely near-term hazards. Roads, visitor centers, and utilities are designed with common risks in mind, storms, floods, fires, and the occasional hydrothermal event. Long-term planning for very rare large eruptions is more theoretical and is treated differently because it would require sustained global coordination. For communities near Yellowstone, sensible preparations for everyday risks and for local geologic hazards are more urgent and practical than worrying about far-fetched scenarios. Psychology plays a role too. Dramatic headlines trigger fear because humans are wired to respond to immediate threats. That emotional response can be helpful when danger is real, but it can also push people to overreact to unlikely events. Clear, calm information helps replace fear with sensible behavior. When officials present facts plainly, what was measured, how big the change was, and what it might mean, people can make rational decisions. Whether to check the park website, postpone a visit, or simply stay on designated paths. Good communication reduces stress and leads to better outcomes. The presence of new studies and improved monitoring should be seen as a positive trend. Better data and better models help scientists spot real anomalies earlier and with more confidence. That means smaller, more targeted responses instead of broad, disruptive scares. The investments in instruments and research are investments in public safety. They let experts act on solid evidence and help managers make choices that protect visitors and preserve park resources. In everyday terms, the message that officials want to send is straightforward. Yellowstone is an active place that changes, sometimes unpredictably, at small scales. But a newsroom scare about an immediate park-wide red alert does not match the careful work scientists are doing. People should respect the park's power, follow official guidance, and rely on trusted information. At the same time, scientists will keep looking, measuring, and improving their ability to warn people when real risks grow. That steady watchfulness is the best protection citizens have. Calm, expert eyes on the ground combined with practical safety steps for anyone who visits or lives nearby. In short, the viral claim that an immediate red alert had been issued because the magma chamber expanded rapidly was not supported by official agency statements. Scientists published careful studies and shared routine monitoring updates. They documented new structure beneath the park and measured small changes in ground level. But those findings amount to better science and more focused safety planning rather than proof of a sudden catastrophic event. The real takeaway is that Yellowstone is an active landscape that requires respect and that the best way to stay safe is to follow official guidance, heed local warnings, and avoid spreading unverified alarms.